good day friends today topic is rutc ruce rucu rucm dg shipping exit exam question and answer part 9 question number 161 directional intake ports in diesel engine are used to option a reduce air charge turbulence option b induce air spill option c deflect hot combustion gas away from the valves option d oppose the effects of piston induced squeeze the correct answer is option b induce air spill the intake ports in the diesel engine it is made such a way that it creates swirling motion swirling force that the when the air comes it will start swirling it start to move around to in order to mix with the atomized fuel properly and get come put into the auto cycle process so the swirling motion is very important for the air to flow in it so that is what this thing direction into intake port is doing it question number 162 why does a chain stretch in service we are telling the chains normally in men the chain drive which is used for many moment compensators some ships crankshaft rotation force is transferred to camshaft through chain drive in this chain got elongated how it is got elongated that is the question option a due to plastic elongation option b due to high temperature expansion option c due to wear on rollers and bushes option d due to the phenomenon of creep the correct answer is option c due to wear on rollers and bushes at time age of time when it is continuously under operation and force acting on it that will be wear on roller bushes then it get extend expanded that's why the chain got stretched the question number 162 option c is the correct answer question number 163 Which of the following method is normally used to lubricate bearings in a small high speed diesel engine? Option A splash lubrication, option B pressure lubrication, option C side feed lubricators, option D mechanical lubricators. The correct answer is option B pressure lubrication. For high speed engine the lubrication has to be supplied with the pressure in order to cover the area because pressure is equal to force into area as the area is uh, the high speed engine area is less and force acting on against the bearing is high so we need pressure lubrication question number 164 what is the purpose of the inlet grid provided within the exhaust gas casing in the gas flow path prior entry to turbo charger this exhaust gas manifold mostly if you see in the main engine if you open the exhaust gas trunk you can see turbo charger inlet side from the exhaust gas trunk that is having a grid which is normally clean at regular interval maybe 16000 hours 8000 hours with the gas exhaust gas manifold inspection that time they will clean also so for that why they are cleaning option a to filter out any unburned unburned carbon option b to absorb and dampen the pressure fluctuations option c to reduce noise in the constant pressure exhaust piping option d to prevent any broken piston ring finding their way to turbine the correct answer is option a to filter out any unburned carbon so in okay, uh, always in the exhaust side the carbon deposit will pass through so this carbon deposit has to be catched in order to prevent this carbon carry over to turbine side it will cause imbalance to the turbine so once the carbon got imbalance there is a chances of damage vibration loss of bearing one of the either so that is the reason we need filter at the out grid excess grid is required in the turbo charging let's say So question number 164 option A is the correct answer. Question number 165. Question number 
the main function of tie rods in the construction of large low speed diesel engine is to i already talked long about tie rods in my previous videos so please refer my previous videos in order to have an idea of what is tie rod how it is works what is the advantage of it option a stiffen the bit plates in way of the main bearing to increase the engine's longitudinal strength option b accept most of the tensile loading that result from the firing post developed during operation mount the engine frame securely to the hull to prevent shaft coupling misalignment option d connect the cross head solidly to the piston rod the correct answer is option b accept most of the tensile loading that results from the firing forces developed during operation what is tensile forces we will see what is tensile forces tensile forces is a continuous compression force acting on the body okay compression force acting on the body and tension is acting on the other side of the body like the thyroid due to the compression and expansion this thyroid will get compressed and expand compressed and expand so it is a ductile material the ultimate tensile strength will be equal to the yield point yield point is the breaking point so thyroid should have higher yield point so the main function of the thyroid is to take this load tensile load compression tension load when the engine running there will be you can see the rotational motion the reciprocating motion is converted into the rotation motion this external load force vibration is taken care by the thyroid to some extent so for question number 165 option b is the correct answer question number 166 the fall in speed that occurs in a diesel engine equipped with governor and increase of load is called option a offset option b speed drop option c speed drop option d speed offset when the load is increasing that is on the generator additional load is coming so in generator speed the rpm will reduce so then the governor will give more fuel in order to maintain the rpm load so this is load dependent governor so when the load changes it will try to maintain the rpm of the generator what this is it so for question number 1 that is called as speed drop so sir Question number one six six. The correct answer is speed drop. This process is called speed drop. Question number one six seven. Which of the following factors governs the lower limit of the thrust bearing clearance? Option A. To allow some oil leakages to prevent overheating. Option B. Reduce of oil viscosity. Option C. Alignment of crankshaft. Option D. to allow the thrust pack to tilt and generate the oil which so the thrust bearing clearance is mainly depends on not allowing the thrust pack to tilt and generate the oil which is to allow the which of the following to count the lower the limit the how the limit is lower it is thrust pack tilt and generate of oil which is formation of oil which is on it that is what it depends So question number one six seven option D is the correct answer. Question number one six eight. Which of the following can result in cracking of piston crown? Option A deposits in cooling spaces. Option B impingement of fuel due to faulty injection. Option C insufficient piston cooling oil flow. Option D all of the above. For question number one sixty eight, the correct answer is all of the above because. If there is a deposit on the cooling spaces, then the heat transfer will not be proper. Then the piston will undergo the high temperature, thermal stress because of combustion chamber. The piston is directly contact with combustion chamber, so thermal stress will be acting on it. It will crack. So impingement of fuel due to faulty injection. That means the fuel is not sprayed properly and it is directed towards the piston, and it did, it was not optimized before it. in contact with the piston it is like you can also hear that the word is like a knocking knocking sound fuel knocking 
this is also known as smoking so that effect happens and there is loss of material crack can happen insufficient insufficient piston cooling oil flow if the oil flow is less again the amount of oil going is mainly different this would be adequate in order to remove the heat from the piston drum if the less oil flow then the less heat transfer there is a less heat transfer there is a more chance of crack of piston drum so for question number 168 option d is the correct answer question number 169 what does the nlge nlgi number of trees indicate option a oxidation resistance of the trees option b the consistency of the trees that is how fluid or non fluid option c d emulsibility of the trees option d the shelf life of the trees what is nlga nlga is national lubricating grease institute so nlga has a consistency number given by the national lubrication grease institute so it, now sometimes it's also called as nlgi grade so it expresses and measure the relative hardness of a grease used for lubrication so it is try to identify the hardness of the grease so the hardness of the grease is more the lifetime period of grease which is also more and it is also it is fluid non fluid also when identified so consistency of the grease is depends so nlg number gives directly talks about the consistency of the grease for question number 169 option b is the correct answer next question 170 which of the following layer of a thin shell bearing gives its fatigue strength option a the overlay option b interlay option c the backing option d the barrier layer so so bearing the overlay interlay everything is coming where the bearing is contact with your shaft or your main part correct if it is a connecting rod bearing it will be the contact inner range that will be inner range of the bearing so it is called it is talks about it okay so what is an overlay overlay bearing is a bearing with a precision electroplated overlay of lead tin or lead vanadium alloy which is 20 to 40 micron thick the lead alloy overlay is generally applied to a copper lead or lead bronze substrate which itself bonded to a steel backing so the thin shell the fatigue strength is mainly depend upon the overlay the overlay is a layer which is outer layer of the inner range of the bearing inner circumference of the bearing which is in contact with your shaft or with your cutting rod uh, cross cut area okay so for question number 170 option a is the correct answer question number 1 What? Which of the bearings listed is most widely used for main and cutting rod bearing of modern diesel engines? Option A, steel lined. Option B, Ford rapid self aligning. Option C, split roller. Option D, precision insert type. So for question number one, someone the latest bearing we are using nowadays is precision precision insert type. So question number one so one B is the correct answer. Question number one seven two. Which of the following statement is false? Option A. The fuel oil sulfur level is one of the most important criteria for choose of TBN level of sulfur oil. Option B. The use of anti polishing rings or flame rings increases the consumption of sulfur oil. Option C. Excessive sulfur oil feed. can lead to harmful deposits in piston top and area option d none of the above for question number 172 option b is the correct answer anti polishing rings which is mostly we see in the two stroke engine flame rings you can see in the four stroke engine it is present on the liner at the top part which will be 
removing all the deposit getting accumulated on the side of the piston drum to fall collect that fall inside the combustion chamber to get combust so it will helps to reduce the consumption of the cylinder oil because if this deposits are present there will be a wear abrasive wear will be there so in order to overcome this antifouls in its we are putting it so if it is a abrasive wear your consumption of cylinder oil will be high so this sentence is wrong question number 172 option b is the correct answer question number 173 prop correction of speed of diesel engine driving alternators without having massive fluctuation is ensured by incorporating option a load limiting device option b load sharing device option c load sensing device option d load shedding device so for the correct answer 173 option c load sensing device is base which is used to correction of the speed of the diesel engine with respect to the driving alternators load okay this device is present in it so for 173 option c is the correct answer question number 174 in a uni flow scavenge marine two stroke diesel engine the scavenge ports in a cylinder liner or machine option a Uniflow is scavenge port is at the bottom, exhaust gas is at the top. The gas, the air is coming from the scavenge space to the cylinder liner through the scavenge port at the bottom, and it passes compress combustion happen and passes out through the exhaust. Okay, so question number one seven four option A only for a part of the circumference at an angle almost tangential to the circumference of the liner. Part B. All around the circumference at right angle to the circumference of the liner. Option C. Only for a part of the circumference at right angle to the circumference of the liner. Option D. All around the circumference at an angle almost tangential to the circumference of the liner. So for question number one seven four, option D is the correct answer. As I said earlier, the angle of suction port, your scavenge port. is mainly to create this swirling motion of flow of air to properly mix with shear automatically so for question number 174 option b is the correct answer so the tangential angle is mainly to achieve the swirl motion question number 175 in order to reduce the thermal loading on the upper part of the liner and increase the effectiveness of cylinder lubrication Modern two-stroke marine diesel engines are designed to have option A: Cermex coated piston rings, bore-cooled liners, and uniflow scavenging. Option B: High top land of piston drum and deeper cylinder cover with top land of drum extending into. Option C: Cylinder cover at PVC. Option D: Low top low top land of the piston drum with bore-cooled cylinder liner. Option E: Bore cooled cylinder liner and bore cooled piston drum with toroidal shaped combustion chamber. For question number one seven five, option B: High top land of piston drum and deeper cylinder cover with top land of drum extending into is the correct answer. So, the top land of the piston drum is high top land piston drum and the cylinder cover is deeper cylinder cover. That is the structural difference. They made to reduce the thermal loading on the top of the line, so this will create a motion like a swirling action, proper combustion, and swirl of the exhaust gas. All these things they will take care of it, and they also help to for the effective lubrication operation also. For question number one seven five, option B is the correct answer. Question number one seven six. Which of the following condition can lead to reduced power developed by a main engine? Option A: High scavenge air temperature. Option B: Choked air suction filter of a turbocharger. Option C: Blow fast in one or more units. Option D: All of the above. The correct answer is option D: All of the above. There is high scavenge air temperature. 
uh, is having a temperature then air cooler a small function the density of the air is not achieved so yeah the molecules are not close to each other as i said in the previous videos the molecules are not close to each other so density is less so the amount of air going to the combustion chamber is less because the density of the air is less so the loss in power choked air such as filter of the temperature if the filter is choked less air is drawn again same option c blow past in one or more unit blow past is pass through of your gas in the combustion chamber to the scavenge port or under piston area through the worn out cylinder liner or piston rings this is called blow past if there is a loss of air loss of combustion gas the power will not be reduced so for question number 176 option d is the correct answer question number 177 which of the following types of diagram would give an indication of effectiveness of exhaust and scavenge process option a power card option b draw card option c light spring diagram option d all of the above the correct answer is light spring diagram what is this light spring diagram light spring diagram is taken similar to the power card and in phase with the engine and with the light compression spring fitted to the indicator this diagram shows the pressure change during the exhaust and scavenge to a large scale it can be used to detect a fault in this operation so this is nothing but in x axis your engine movement from vdc to tdc and y axis is the pressure difference in the combustion unit so this will be formed like a loop structure so that is called light spring diagram so it is to identify the effectiveness of the scavenging operation and the exhaust operation okay so the overlap here it blowing out of all the exhaust gas with the overlap here amount of scavenging here everything will be identified So for question number one, seven, seven, option C is the correct answer. Question number one, seven, eight. As a thumb rule, volatility in a crank pin of medium speed engine should not exceed dash of bearing clearance. Option A, ten percentage. Option B, fifteen percentage. Option C, twenty-five percentage. Option D, thirty percentage. The correct answer is option C, twenty-five percentage. In general. So there is a twenty-five percentage of bearing clearance. Then this is the OLT in the crank pin. Then you have to change the bearing. In a naturally aspirated diesel engine, the volume of air intake is directly related to engine. Option A, compression ratio. Option B, valve size. Option C, fuel pressure. Option D, cylinder clearance volume. So in a diesel engine. If the intake air, air manifold coming to the engine is more big, then the valve also will be big. If there is a big, a larger manifold, larger intake coming to the engine, then there will be a air intake is higher. So air intake is directly dependent upon the valve size because the intake of the manifold. From the air intake manifold coming to the edge through the cylinder head, the pass through the through that area. The area is more the valve to close and open the you know that area is also more. So the valve size is directly dependent on it. So question number one seven nine option B is the correct answer. Question number one eight zero. A piston rod stuffing box scraper rings, but clear should. Option A, not to be allowed to fall below 50 percentage of the original clearance. Option B, not to be allowed to increase above 50 percentage of the original clearance. Option C, not to be allowed to fall below manufacturer recommended value. Option D, not to be allowed to increase manufacturer recommended value. For the question number one eight zero, option C. Not to be allowed to fall below manufacturer recommended value is the correct answer. See, the piston scraper ring is outside the piston rod, okay, and it will have equal space in it. It is not a single ring; it 
it is a number of frames, four pieces, six pieces, eight pieces, twelve pieces. It depends upon the manufacturing session. So this clearance will be measured. This is normally called as clearance K. If the piston ring, the scrap ring is worn out, worn out, then the di internal dia of the piston of the scrap ring is reduced. So it try to come closer to it. So the clearance will get reduced. Okay, it cannot be increased because the loss of material will lead to bring the other rings to closer to each other. So, for question number 180, option C is the correct answer. Okay, friends, if you like my video, please like. If you want to see more such videos with a good explanation, please subscribe my channel. If you have any doubts, comments, any recommendation, you can put it in the comment box. Thank you.